I've been called in when we know that there are human remains there, where the investigating officer has identified human remains, and we come in and treat it as an archaeological investigation. And we first look around the whole site and see what the extent is. Is it a broad scatter? Is it uh, all concentrated in one place? And then define the perimeter and create a map. We then grid it off and dig down and find the first evidence, you know, that first piece of identifiably human bone. And from there, from the orientation, if it's an intact articulated skeleton, or uh, the remains are all more or less in one piece, you can then, from that orientation, you know which squares to dig further. So if you find a shoulder, you know from the orientation of that shoulder sort of where the rest of the body might be. So we then excavate that and recover that and recover any other remains that are in the area. Then transport that to the detachment. And in one case, I was involved in preparing the remains at the detachment in the lab. It's a process, it's a procedure that we do, but it's one that is very, it's very fluid. We're always thinking about what we're doing and we're trying to work very intelligently, trying to bring our brains to the scene and really think about it. When we're establishing the time since death uh, or the post-mortem interval, it's pretty important because one of the primary objectives is to identify the person. And so if we can say that that person hasn't been there long, by the condition of the remains, then they won't be looking for people who disappeared 10 years ago. They'll start by looking for people who disappeared recently, that have gone missing since that period of time when you think that body appeared in that place. So helping identify that person is very closely linked to correctly estimating, by the condition of the remains, how long that body has been there.